Hi everybody on YouTube, my name is Aaron Shupan and I shot Lucy and Dick and today we're going to do something different and we're going to put Tom and Jeremy in the hot seat and ask them some questions. Guys, um, <laughs> hey, Aaron, so, uh, why don't we start? I have worked with you guys for quite some time now, Jeremy a lot longer, mm. but I don't know, three or four years maybe yeah. since we all started well, like, doing stuff together. 20... 2015 was when we went to China. End of 2015. Yep. Well, I'm curious about uh, you guys, you're a team, and you always sort of appear as a team, especially in like these sort of things. It's always Tom and Jeremy, Tom and Jeremy. Can you tell us a bit about that working relationship um, from inception? Also, working with you guys on set, that feels like there's a bit of a hive mind thing kind of going on at times. A hive yeah. mind or complementary skill sets? Yeah, I think that's the one. I think we both <laughs> do well at the things that the other person can't do and it seems to be you know so this over this is one fully yeah. functioning grown out <laughs> yeah, of yeah no, that's kind of the way like I, I think that's almost the perfect way to describe it it's like if there was a good person it's kind of the combination of the two it's just like yeah that works mm -hmm. and sometimes people get us mixed up anyway and they just assume like, mm. we come together and yeah I don't know is there any method to how this works, you know, do you know when I, to defer to, to each honest, other? Or I reckon that that's actually been born over like the time of working together. Yeah, from the start, like I mean, what like Close Your Eyes was my first film, but then with with Jeremy, um, but that was me sort of directing him as an actor. At the, that's how it started because um, I was like, I saw this dude with long surfy hair. I was like, yeah, he needs to be in it, but he also needs to do VFX. And then he made me be his friend, and that worked yeah. out. That worked out pretty well. <laughs> it was not an option. But but I think the longer then then you went and did a couple of VFX stints in like Sydney. Yeah. And we just we just kept bouncing ideas, and I think you know I made you go to write like writing courses and stuff like that at afters, mm -hmm. like sort of. Well, you, you, I'm going to this, and I don't like being awkward and alone at these things. So Jeremy, you're coming too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's where just random ideas and a lot of ideas that never went anywhere because they're not very good. Um, but that that was a couple of years of pitching ideas, trying to build, like we actually wrote some things that never materialized. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was that sort of, I guess, ongoing work that we finally sort of, I think, clicked into a way of working. Together. Yeah. And I think a lot of the stuff that we were tinkering on was stuff that was just quite frankly too big. Yeah. Like it was just completely unachievable. And yeah. as we were noodling away at ideas, we would sort of filter slowly closer and closer to something that we could actually feasibly do. And that sort of then became our mantra of like the only projects we crack open now are ones that we have a very clear pathway to executing on. Yeah. That decision making process of saying no to ideas that are too big. Yeah. Like that's a discipline you learn over time. I think it kind of gets beaten like, into I'm gonna pile yeah, actually, yeah, I'm like gonna a, as a filmmaker you're like yeah I have all these great ideas and as, like they're always the best ideas when you're thinking mm. of them but I think now we're getting a little bit better of going don't be a dickhead you can't do that yet maybe 10 years down the track when there is a budget there when there is a bit more stuff under the um, I guess under the belt but like I think those first couple that like even the way like that really came about because you were working in, you'd been busting your ass in sort of high end VFX mm -hmm. and I'd been writing on contract for a handful of years and nothing was getting made. And I think it was sort of a mutual frustration. It was like, let's <laughs> just fucking do something. And the way was the thing that sort of came about first. Yeah. And it was a mixture of two things. It was one, us vibing on the same thing. So we'd just gone and seen a Western. We're like, oh, wouldn't a Western be fun to do? And then also having a beer and going, what is in our bag of tricks right now? And we had just made a short, which was a little bit of, you know, pulsy, telekinetic-y mm. kind of stuff back and forth. And Tom said, oh, well, how hard is that telekinesis stuff to do? And I said, well, yeah. truth be told, it's piss easy once you know how. And we're like, all right, cool. Make it a Western, telekinesis is in it. And we can't afford much. So boom, road movie, two people yeah. in a car traveling. And we that laid down the foundation of what the way would be. And we just started prepping what it would be to fund it, to execute it as a small feature, how much time it would take. And fortunately, when that funding round came for the for the shorts, we were already so far down the path of development that it didn't take as much to just sort of 
switch into that mode and we were fortunate to actually get um, that funding to make it. Mm. Um, and now we're sort of back on the path of getting the feature developed. But all of the things that we are doing is looking at our bag of tricks, what can we feasibly execute right now, and then building our ideas around it, rather than going for a pie in the sky. Yeah. Sort of it object. almost becomes a weird backwards puzzle. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I think the more we do it, the more we understand like what what funding is out there for us mm. um, and what avenues we have to market. Um, and you kind of get a better idea of what people are looking for too. So you're like, well, I'm not going to put this in front of that person or uh, this one just won't go to this government organisation because they just did one of those the month before. Um, and But that's been just through working with those, I guess, groups and organisations for the better part of a couple, I would say three, four years now. Mm. Um, you just get a better idea of the landscape. Mm-hmm. Um, but we really, in terms of going back to that first question of our, I guess, working relationship and almost like those complementary roles, that was just through, you know, essentially five years of working and going, this, this kind of works, I'm good at this. I can pick up the phone and call someone. Jeremy can't really do that. <laughs> I'm so uh, socially anxious. This yeah. <laughs> Jeremy can pump out VFX yeah. at a ridiculously high level. I can't do that. I hate spreadsheets a little bit less than you. Yeah, I've grown to love the spreadsheet. That's become a, a, a favourite tool of mine. I colour code them in really tasteful pastels. That's fun. Yeah. That's nice I'm for you. I'm super into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, this is all really interesting. It's very pragmatic stuff we're talking about. Mm. But we all get into this arena because yeah. we fucking love movies. And I personally will get images or ideas in my head that won't leave me alone. And yeah, a lot of them are like, if you're lucky, 10 years down the track, yeah. you'll be able to pull that off. All that pragmatism aside, what do you do with those ideas? And how do you, just as a, I want to say it, artist, how do you how do you cope with having to say no to well, these things? Like, to honest, Where do you put them? You never really say no. They're mm-hmm. just there. And you never know when that thing will be relevant again or a section of that thing like you might go like from a writing perspective you might go i really like i really like that story but not for now but then a thread a character or a sequence or something that might fit and might click with something a little bit better and that's like back to that reverse puzzle Mm -hmm. like i think everything is always going to have its relevance and we we've sort of me and you've talked about you know doing one pages and sort of pitch documents and stuff like that there is never wasted work Mm. because you can always go back to it and you just never know like timing you never know about you might talk to that one person who's like we're after something like this you're like i have half of that (laughs) but i can put this with that and then that initial i can get that vision that idea that i wanted to get out I find a way to make that thing come to life. Yeah, I find having a drawer full of, even if they're half-finished ideas, eventually you might end up making some sort of like a a pizza version of that, like an ingredient from that and an ingredient from that, and then you put it all in a pot and here's this new thing. And sometimes a lot of those really, like the ones like, there's still a couple, like Rogues was one that we tooled around (laughs) with for ages and just never worked, but there's, there's, Bits of that. What that was I, that? Oh, so we, yeah, were, we, we, we a were space opera. We were trying to yeah, around space right. opera. <laughs> of course, it was a space it was opera. So <laughs> this guy yeah. was like three lightsabers. Uh, a, a big part of what we've also done, like I, I, I get really excitable about a particular idea or a notion. Like you know, with the way it's like, oh man, we can we can totally splatter a dude. It'll be the mm. shit. Or Lucy and Dick. Like oh, I, I'm really confident we can build a robot right now. Mm. And I will usually go off and tool that together and prove the notion first, you know, in the same way that before we did the way we did the other short and with Lucy and Dick, I was working on another short called Bot just to prove that the robots could function and be Mm. a thing. And I will sort of go hell for leather at that, get it up and running and functioning. And then Tom is usually like, will ask the very appropriate question of why? I'm like, which is of course like what why why, why how much do you hate that question by the way well no like, it's i've see i see his eyes move now when mm. i say why because it's, i know like it's because i've been asked that so many times yeah. like and, and that's generally you know it's one of those questions what, yeah whenever i've gotten feedback yeah. from something 
it's always the, the, the initial response is is just clutching at your heart. Yeah. yeah. But once that once the, that adrenal or whatever response dissipates, it's always the right question yeah. to ask. Mm. It's a painful question it though, is, because it, like I think mm. it really highlights like if you like a lot of the time. There's no reason you're like, I had that idea and I thought it was cool. Because I fucking like it, Tom. Because <laughs> I wrote it. Because it looked good. And, yeah. Uh, and, but yeah, like, I think it is it is a tough question to ask. And like, I know, like, when I ask you that question and I see your eyes go, like, mine go when I get asked that question mm. as well. But I do think it's always a relevant one because you're like, all right, you unpack it. And then you unpack it the way you need to, which is, okay, how do we make it? Like, mm. why are we making it? Yeah, and then well, you're like, that's and where the story is yeah. kind of born, where I'm like, it would be dope to splatter do that. Okay, why? I'm like, okay, so again, someone has telekinesis. It's a story. It's a thing. It's a that. Mm. Yeah. And in the same way, sort of Lucy and Dick sort of like, we can do robots. Why? All right, well, let's construct something yeah. around this that suits our tastes mm. and our needs. And then you start to build out from that initial concept. So it's still as pragmatic as it is. It starts off with the kernel of something that we're sort of excited about. Mm.